Hello, my name is Claudio Costa. I'm the author of the book Lines of Thought Rethinking Philosophical Assumptions. If you are impressed by Hillary Putnam's argument against the possibility that you are a brain in a vat, you can choose any alternative sceptical hypothesis or imagine that you are a brain recently consignated to a vat since philosophers will usually hold that in this way the argument can be neutralized. Nonetheless, we should remember that Putnam's argument is controversial. He argues that the hypothesis that we are brains in vats is self-refuting. If I am a brain in a vat, I cannot think that I am a brain in a vat because I cannot have thoughts about brains, vats, water, trees. In order to have these thoughts, I need to have causal contact with these things. Thus, if I am a brain in a vat, the best I could possibly have would be thoughts referring to something like electric patterns, object in, in my images, he says, generated by the computer programs. In this case, he thinks the reference to watts, watts, water, trees would be as illusory as the image of Churchill accidentally drawn by an ant walking across the sun, lacking either an intention or an inadequate cause. Since we are able to entertain the thought that we are brains in vats, we cannot be brains in vats. This is his argument. The problem with Putnam's argument, as some have noted, is that it ignores the flexibility of our language. Indeed, his argument unreasonably assumes that the representation accidentally generated in a brain as a counterpart of electrical patterns in a computer cannot have a referential function analogous to the representation generated in a brain by the experience of the real things, since only the later representation is properly caused by the real thing. However, why cannot the representation of a brain in a vat be referential in a similar way, although in fact misleadingly referring to something that exists only as electrical patterns in a computer. We can compare the brain image of a tree produced by the electrical patterns in the computer with the brain image we have of a tree that we see in front of us. They are, one, qualitatively identical, as he admits, but there is not enough not enough reason to think that they are not also two causes. They are caused the first by the electrical patterns, even without any relationship to what could make the statement ultimately true, and that the second, the real, by light reflected from a real tree and that they are also free, both intended by the brain to represent what they seem to show, namely trees, also in the first case equivocally. Furthermore, the compar comparison between the phenomena occurring in the brain in a vat and the case of the accidental drawing of the image of Churchill by an ant is utterly misleading, since not only does the ant have no intention, no intention, it is not even being caused to copy anything. In my view, Button's argument only convinces those who are already determined, determined to be convinced. It rests upon a dogmatic application of his semantic externalism, the doctrine suggesting 
that meanings and even thoughts are in some way suspended in the domain of external things.